How's everybody doing? Uh, so this video is just kind of an impromptu thing. I wasn't sure if I was going to release it, um, but uh, I've, I'm revisiting the Hardline Coax Power Divider. I've got the right diameter tubing. I've cut it to the proper length. I think I'm getting better results. I just want to say thank you to the folks that uh, were involved in the comments and were making suggestions. One person said that the load I was using may be reactive because it's a wire wound resistor. And I think that was the case because we were resonating at 600 megahertz instead of 435. So I, I have the proper loads now, everything is set. So in this video, I, I redo it, I take some measurements, I show you how to uh, measure return loss, um, not using the VNA, but using the spectrum analyzer. It's all kind of off the cuff, we're just kind of hanging out, and uh, it's a little bit of a different format than what we're used to, but um, figured that uh, you guys might get a kick out of it. All right, hope you enjoy it. You all don't mind if I play some Misfits, do you? So play the Misfits. Anyway, I thought we could hang out and just work on something. I've got a tube with a proper diameter. If you've been following along, I had the wrong size diameter tube here and I was wondering why things weren't going right. I had my own load that I made. The matching load finally came in. So we're going to use a proper diameter tube um, and replace it here. And I forgot all the measurements that I took. So I got to go back and reference that stuff. So first things first, let's remove the uh, tube from the inside here. Can you see that? So I gotta have, uh, heat up this pin here and pull the tube out, so. I know this is riveting stuff and you're super excited like I am. Um, and I've been kind of procrastinating, putting off making this thing. That's one side. I'm gonna take these loads off. I kind of keep them on when I'm soldering the pin in so it distributes the heat and keeps the center pin um, in the center. I think these are cheap type end connectors and I don't know if that's Teflon or nylon. If it's nylon, it's going to melt. So, uh, so yeah. Sorry if I made your, your A-L-E-X-A device play the misfits at home. Oh, what is this? Nobody likes the new misfits. Come on. Can you see that? I'm just kind of heating up one side and walking the other side out. Here we go. All right, I think, you know, one of the things that I didn't account for was the velocity factor of the copper. I'm gonna go with 165 when I calculated for a 95% um, velocity factor. Mark it for 65, right about there. This is the thinnest wall stuff they had. There we go. Look how beautiful that came out. Huh? Okay, so we're using uh, number 12 American wire gauge. This uh, wire is full of tahins. Waiting for your prayer. All right, so I urge you to put questions in the comments down below. Could be anything, doesn't have to be pertaining to this video, um, but uh, I'm gonna be doing an FAQ coming up. So if you're watching this, you're probably a return viewer because this is kind of an esoteric topic. Um, but I urge you to leave a comment and I'll get back to you in the next FAQ. Ooh, copper sure does uh, conduct heat, doesn't it? I'm gonna have to do, I might have to bust out the torch I gotta do this off camera guys, sorry. Well, she's all done after a night of struggling and using the torch to uh, connect the uh, copper to the uh, end connectors. This is the prototype. I'm gonna, if the results are good here, I'm gonna make another one. And I think what I'm gonna do this time is since I had to use a torch for the center conductor, I'm gonna drill some holes around the uh, periphery of this so that I can heat this up with my iron and all the heat doesn't soak into the um, the copper tubing because it was really drawing away a lot of the heat and the iron 
was on like 900 degrees and, and couldn't keep up. Um, so I think if I do that, it'll kind of isolate this uh, thermally, uh, but electrically it'll still be effective. So I'll drill, I don't know, like 10 holes around the perimeter and, and that should make things a little easier on the next one. I'm not gonna show you the next one. Uh, we're just gonna make sure that this prototype works. All right, so I don't necessarily trust that little VNA 100%. So what I'm gonna do is take a measurement of my spectrum analyzer. Now my spectrum analyzer does not have a tracking generator option installed. So to measure the return loss, okay, and that's to find out if this thing is resonant now on the frequency that we hope it is at 435 megahertz. Uh, what we're gonna do is use a broadband noise source. So this thing generates noise, you know, all the way down close to DC, all the way up into the gigahertz range. It's not flat and we'll compensate for that when we take the measurement. So here I have a directional coupler. What the directional coupler does, it allows RF to flow in either direction, but the coupling port here only, well, ideally measures, kind of samples off the amount of energy flowing in one direction only. So in this case, um, I'm injecting a signal into the output port and I've connected my power divider to the input port. So I'm not measuring the amount of energy traditionally that would be going out of a system, I'm kind of measuring what's coming back. So anything that's a mismatch in here is gonna be reflected back. I should see a nice dip at 435 megahertz. And that's what we're looking for. So that's gonna allow us to do that with this. It's not 100% pretty, you know, compared to if I had an actual tracking generator. But uh, that kind of gives you an idea of what we're doing. Injecting a signal into the device under test, measuring what's being reflected back through this coupling port. All right, to make my measurement for return loss, uh, normally you would use what's called a tracking generator. Now, I don't have that option installed, but what that would do is inject a, uh, it would sweep across a frequency band constantly, right? and inject that signal into my device under test, and I measure what's returned here at the input port. Um, but I can't do that, so the other option is to use a noise source. So instead of sweeping across the frequency band, what we're doing is just blasting it with uh, broadband energy, okay? So it's kind of acting like a tracking generator, but the results aren't as pretty. And you can see uh, exactly what's coming from the noise source, and I have a higher amplitude at low frequencies and it kind of rolls off until it hits 900 megahertz and flattens out a little bit. That's not going to allow me to take an accurate measurement, so I need to normalize this trace. So how do I do that? Um, let's hit preset to make sure everything's cleared out. Okay, so there's my signal. I go to trace. I want to sample that trace. Okay, so I go to B and then I clear right B and blank B. Now this process is going to be different for every spectrum analyzer. Um, so that's stored in B. Now I want to go to normalize and that should flatten it out. And that's what it looks like. Now it's flat, I can take a decent measurement. I'm going to connect my device under test, which is our power divider. And you can see, I mean, if I had a tracking generator, it'd be a nice clean line, but because we're using a noise source, it's obviously noisy. Now we can go to uh, video averaging on, okay? And this is taking 100 samples and averaging it out to kind of smooth it out. So you can see the process here, average counting up. We've hit 100, so now let's turn on a marker. And we'll go down to where the dip is. It doesn't look that great, but 437, 432. Uh, it's a little more broadband than I was expecting, which is good, but the dip isn't as sharp as I had hoped. So I think we should just connect it to the SWR meter. I mean, I'm happy with that, that it's actually on frequency instead of way off like the previous video. So I'm gonna connect it to the SWR meter. We'll take an actual SWR reading. Um, that's basically just a function of this, but I would like to uh, take an actual measurement with the uh, system we're gonna use. So let's switch over to the SWR. I've got my uh, handheld radio here connected and we're operating at 435 megahertz. First thing we need to do to check our SWR is set the level. So I'll, well, let's check the forward power. So about four and a half watts, SWR set, transmit, and then we're gonna crank it up till we reach maximum deflection. All right, then we go to SWR. So I got a 1.2 to one. So uh, looks like it's working, holy cow. Check the actual reverse power. 
That looks like about a little less than half a watt. So it works, finally. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this was one of the le one of the lesser enjoyable uh, videos that I've made, but so I think the lesson here is that if you need a power divider, uh, you're pretty much better off just buying one. I think they're like 100, 150 bucks. So yeah, it was a fun learning process though. I uh, hope you guys are doing all right, staying safe, wash your hands, and uh, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.